Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to a Watch Crave video. In this video, we will be having a look at the XDAO X02T Titanium Diver. First off, I'd like to clarify that I have no idea how to pronounce this brand name. To have gone by several names, IPOS, IXN DAO, and it seems to have settled for IX DAO, at least for this particular watch. If anyone knows how to pronounce this brand name, let me know in the comment below. Anyway, this particular watch here is a homage to the Pelagos 39 Diver. There are actually a few titanium Pelagos homages around, but I bought this watch because I was a fan of their previous homage. Currently, you can get this watch in two colors, black or blue. You then get to choose between a fully indexed bezel plus a matte dial, or a partial indexed bezel with a sunburst dial. Finally, you can choose between a right-handed or left-handed crown. I went with the black color, the partially indexed bezel, and the right-handed crown. As for the price, this watch can be bought for around 229 to 259 US dollars. When it comes to packaging, similar to a lot of AliExpress brands, the watch comes in a Pelican case. Unlike other AliExpress brands, however, the case is quite nice and well decorated with the brand's logo. Along with the case, you also get a badge and a tool to size the bracelet. Sadly, these things do not fit into the case. Not that it matters anyway. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the specs. First of all, this watch is made of titanium. Now, titanium is slightly weaker than steel in terms of strength, but it is much lighter. In terms of color, it has a darker shade than steel. It's also a harder material to process. What this means is that most titanium watches are lighter, yet darker and less shinier than a steel's watch. Titanium also tends to scratch easier than steel, but apparently the scratches are also easier to remove. To be honest, I don't know much about the material, so feel free to correct me in the comment if I say anything wrong. Anywho, the watch measures at 39mm for its diameter. The thickness is only 11.5mm thanks to the thinner movement. The lug width measures at 21mm. This is probably because the original Pelagos 39 also has a 21mm lug width. The lug to lug length is 47mm. The bracelet has female end links. So this watch should be wearable even for those with wrist size smaller than 6 inches. For the watch glass, it has a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating. The water resistant rating is rated at 200 meters and is printed with tiny dark red text, which makes it almost impossible to read. As with most AliExpress brands, this rating may or may not be accurate, something to take into consideration if you want to take this for a swim. Because the watch is made of titanium, it's a lot lighter than stainless steel. With four links removed to fit my wrist, the watch weighs in at 101 gram. If this was steel, I reckon it would weigh in at around a 140 grams mark. As for the movement, this watch is running with the PT5000 movement. This movement is a clone of the popular ETA2824 movement that is often used for entry level Swiss watches. It's by no means a fake. The pattern for the ETA movement expired and became available in the public domain. So a company called HK Precision used that design as a basis for the PT5000 movement. The PT5000 is a higher beat movement, beating at 28,800 times per hour. This means that the second hand will tick 8 times to get from one second mark to the other. More ticks equal a smoother looking second sweep. In terms of accuracy, the PT5000 claims to have an accuracy of plus minus 12 seconds per day. This particular watch has an accuracy of minus 2 seconds per day, which is pretty good in my opinion. Now, there are some downsides to this movement. The first one is that the PT5000 has a date wheel, which means this watch has a ghost date. The second is the potential bad QC you may get with this movement, which can lead to the watch failing, or at least that's what I've heard from some watch forums. On a positive note, this movement is affordable and because it's a clone, you can always replace it with a proper Swiss made movement. Moving on to the design. The case shape is pretty much an exact copy of the Pelagos case design. The top and side are brush finish and separated by a polished chamfered edge. The edges are slightly rounded off and do not feel sharp. However, the same can be said for the lug tips, which are a bit sharp. Of course, this shouldn't affect your wearing experience. The case back is also well finished and decorated with some engravings. The crown is easy to grip and is decorated with the IX DAO logo. I must say that I'm quite a fan of this logo. 
The bezel is unidirectional, but only 60 clicks. Once again, this is probably because the Pelagos also has a 60 clicks bezel. Personally, I'd like to see a 120 clicks bezel instead. The bezel is easy to grip and rotate, however, it does feel a bit loose and there is a lot of back play. On a positive note, it seems well aligned and there's no noticeable misalignment. The bezel insert is made of ceramic and it is fully loomed with BGW9. The bracelet is also made of titanium. It's brush finish on top, bottom and side. It starts at 21mm and taper down to 16mm. There's no half link included, but the links are fairly short themselves, so it's a lot easier to get a good fit. The bracelet is connected to a mill clasp, double push pin operated, and of course, titanium. It has three micro adjustment slots. The top of the clasp is decorated with the IX dial word. Personally, I think this is a miss and kind of makes the clasp look tacky. In my opinion, they should have just gone with the logo. Now for the dial, since I chose the partially indexed bezel, I got the sunburst dial. Looking at it however, I would say the sunburst effect is very faint, if not present at all. I would just simply call it not matte. The dial is decorated with the logo and brand name below the 12 hours mark. There's also this unnecessary timeless text below it. Above the 6 o'clock, you have the extremely hard to read water rating, the self-winding text, and another unnecessary milli-diver text. I really hope they will remove the Timelex and milli-diver if they're making a version 2. The hour indices are ply and race, they're made of what I'm assuming to be plastic and filled with BGW9 loom. Since this is a Pelagos homage, you get snowflake style hand. This is where they kind of drop the ball. There are three things I don't like about the hands. One is that they don't quite match with the indices because of the stark white border. The second is that the minute hand extends a tiny bit further than the second hand and is almost touching the chapter ring. Ideally, they should be the same length or the second hands extending a bit further than the minute hand. Finally, the last point is the poor quality control of the hands. Zooming in, you can see what looks like to be dust or bubbles in the loom paint. You would expect better quality control for a plus $200 watch. And since I already mentioned the chapter ring, instead of a printed chapter ring on the dial, you get one that double as a rehaul. On a more positive note, the watch is fully loomed from dial to bezel, and the loom is excellent. Excellent. On my tiny 6.2 inch wrist, it fits perfectly thanks to the female end links. I reckon it would fit wrist sizes down to 5.6 inches. Although one thing I've noticed is that I do get a bit of discomfort now and then as the watch sits more flush on my wrist. This discomfort is fortunately alleviated by the lightweight titanium. Of course, this could just be a me thing and may not apply to you. So, how do I feel about this watch? To be honest, I have mixed feelings. The watch has some very good positives. It's one of the more affordable titanium homage. The watch is lightweight and easy to wear. The movement is high beat and is well regulated. It has amazing loom and is easy to fit thanks to the female end links. On top of that, I really like their logo, but not the tacky timeless word on the dial, of course. The watch doesn't have any major issues, but there are a few negatives. First of all, the bezel is quite loose. Then we have the 21mm lug width, the tacky text on the bezel, the stocky white hands that don't quite match the indices, and finally, I'm not too impressed with the quality control of the paints and the hands. You could say that the watch hands, single-handedly, let this watch down for me. If they make a V2, I do hope they address these issues. And that brings us to the end of this video. What do you think about this watch? Did you get your hands on one, and how did you like or dislike it? Feel free to drop a comment down below. If you find this video enjoyable or helpful, please drop a like and subscribe for future videos. As a new channel, I really appreciate your support. Until next time.